hey hello everyone this is victor momo from excel moments and in this video i want to walk you through um, some solutions to a problem i was asked recently let me quickly explain so the user has data that looks like this three types and you know a couple of numbers here now in here you just have the sum for each of the rows and he wants to know how many rows sum up to one how many rows sum up to two how many rows sum up to three easy enough if you can create a column like this and you know you can probably use a count before he says oh as in he can't use the values in this column for some reason well which was exciting for me because <laughs> that opened up you know an opportunity to make this video and to explain how to do like i would say dynamic row by row sum it's easy to just select this range and you know get the sum but what if you wanted to get the sum row by row you know with one formula okay and have it in an array so um that for me is the bedrock of you know the problem once you can get that part getting the number of rows that sum up to one or two or three should be easy so that's what i'm going to walk you through this video using a couple of methods depending on you know which one is more appealing to you so i'll start off with the first one which for me is the easiest and maybe the shortest um which is using the by row function and that's what the by row function exists for okay so it's one of the lambda helper functions so you have by row and i mean it's named aptly right so whatever expression you feed into it instead of giving you the result for the entire range it's going to give you the result row by row so let me just show you how to do it with this so you do by row you select the array the array in this case will be our range right so just do this if you decide to lock it you can decide not to it's not going to affect the result in this case right so for the function because it's a lambda helper function then you have to feed the function with a lambda okay i don't want to talk about lambdas in this video uh, so for the lambda you need two arguments first argument is just i would say a name or a variable that represents you know this range so i could give it any name in this case i could just use x or y Okay, and now the question is, what do you want to do with X? I want to sum X. That's really what I want to do, right? I'm just doing a sum. The only difference is that because I'm feeding it into a by row, instead of giving me, you know, the sum of everything in A2 to, to C9, it's going to give me the sum, yes, but it's going to give me the sum row by row for every row in this range A2 to, to C9. So here, I'm just going to say sum, but since I've represented it by X now, I will be saying in here sum X. Okay, so that's just how it is. Close one bracket and one more, and then you do enter. And you see that we have exactly the same result here. Okay, so but now we have it within an array, right? So this for me is what makes it work. The next part of saying, oh, I want to know how many of them sum up to one, two, or three is really easy. What I could do, just to demonstrate, I could test this and say if it's equals to one. Of course, this is going to give me true, false, true, false, right? Okay. So now you see that once you have that, you may want to convert this to numbers so that you can do a sum. So how do you do that? You could do one multiplied by, and then, you know, this converts all the true forces to one zero. And then you can just put a sum around it. Okay. That tells you that there are two rows that sum up to one. Okay. And that's right. There's one here and there's another one here. So that's how, you know, Kind of handle that okay so now let's take a look at the second approach okay so what i'm really focusing on is you know being able to do by a row by row you know sum. the second part like i said is really easy so the second option i want to use here is an m mult and you know what m mult is m mult is your matrix multiple right so you could think of matrices as matrices you could think of matrices as ranges you could think of them as arrays they all kind of play the same way you know in my head so let's see how this one would work and now i will just have to do some little introduction you know to matrices so you kind of understand you know when the multiplication would work and when it won't work the first thing you need to know is that for you to multiply two matrices together you know the number of rows of the second matrix must be equal to the number of columns of the first. Or say that in reverse, the number of columns of the first must be equal to the number of rows of the second. So here's what I mean. If I, if I have an A by 
E matrix. On this side, for it to be able to multiply the next matrix, the next matrix must have a B by whatever else. B by C. The implication here is that because this is written as row by column, okay, so the column of the first, which is B, must be equal to the row of the second. And when you multiply these two together, just get rid of the Bs in between, the common thing, you'll be left with an A by C. So the result will be an A by C matrix. So what I'm just trying to say here is that if the number of columns of the first is not equal to the number of rows of the second, then it can't work. Okay? And this you would see as being very important as we proceed. So now, think about this. We have this range. The question is, what's the dimension of this range here? It has three columns, one, two, three, and it has what? Eight rows, okay? So that's an eight by three. You can just take that down somewhere. Okay, it's eight by, oh, sorry, that's seven. So that's eight by three, right? Now, I know I need to return a result that looks like this, which is, you know, the sum row by row. Now, the result is going to be in one column, and it's going to have eight rows, okay? So it's going to be in one column, and it's going to have eight rows. For me to move from an eight by three to, so it means I have an eight by three, I need to multiply it by something, and then I need to come up with an eight by one. Why do I keep writing seven <laughs> as the result, okay? So I start off with eight by three. So what do I need to multiply by to get an eight by one, okay? Don't forget that if I have three rows here, the number of columns in the next matrix must be three. So I know it's going to be three and it has to be by one. That's the only way I can get, you know, an eight by one from an eight by three. So what this means is that I need to multiply this range by a three by one. When I say three by one, it just means three rows, one column. So essentially, I just need to multiply it by a matrix that just has one, one, one. So that way, and I'll show you how the multiplication works. And that way I can get what I need. So if these are the two matrices like we have here, so we have this and we have one, one, one. This is what's going to happen. So take it as column A, row one, and take this one as column D, row one. So the way the matrix goes is this is going to start with A1. So A1, which is like the first element in this matrix, is going to multiply the first one here, which is D1. That's going to be added to the second one here, which is B1. Going to multiply by the second one here which is d2 okay and it's going to be added to the third element here which is c1 it's going to be multiplied by the third element here which is d3 okay so now that's what's going to happen on the first row the next row is just going to take this three you know and then multiply by this three the next one is going to take this three and multiply by this three so that's really what the M is going to do, and it's going to return all the results that we want. I know it's a little elaborate, but you know it's kind of important you follow the thinking there. So what I'm going to do is simple. I'm just going to pull up, you know, an M mult. Okay, here. So I'm going to do M mult. Then the first uh, array is this. I take these three guys. So I lock that, and then I put a comma. Okay, so now the second thing is the second array. I need to find a way to return, you know, one, one, one. Okay, so I can use the sequence function, you know, knowing that I would need three rows technically. So what I can do is this. I can do sequence. Okay, and I know the number of rows I need really is the number of columns in this range. Yeah, so I can just do columns of this. Okay, so the number of columns there, which obviously will be three. You know is what i need for the number of rows there okay so now this is going to give me one two three but what i need is one 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 right so this is what most people would do i mean there are many ways to doing it you know you could probably use something like a round up and divide by three so everybody may give you one 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 you know but mathematically if you raise anything to the power of zero it gives you one so what you could do is you could close this and just raise it to the power of zero by raising it to the power of sorry my Lighting is poor here, so I guess that's why I'm having to press the wrong keys. So by raising this to the power of zero, let me use an evaluate so that everybody can see what's going on. So in here, don't forget this one here is going to give you one, two, three. By the time you raise it all to the power of zero, then it's going to give you one, one, one. Okay, and you can see the columns there. Okay, semicolon. So telling you that it's in the rows. So once you have this, you can close bracket and you press enter and you have what you need one two two three two one three two 
Once you have this part, the rest is simple. Compare it with the value you want and you can do a sum. Okay, so that's that one. Next one I'm going to do is using, you know, the offset function. And you just kind of follow the thinking here. Really, I'm going to, you know, maybe I could decide to anchor, you know, on a point. I could take this as my anchor, for example. To get to the sum for the first row, it means that if I'm using an offset, I should be offsetting by zero, right? So that I can stay on the same row. To come to this row, I need to offset by one. Here, two, here, three, and so on. So there's a sequence of zero, one, two, three which the sequence function can get for us. All we need to do is to start, you know, at zero, okay? So once we get, you know, using the offset and say, oh, I'm at this point, then I just tell it I need, you know, three, meaning the width should be three and I'll get the sum. So it's kind of simple, you know, to make it work. So let's, let's go with that. So I do offset and I'm gonna start with this. So this is gonna be my pivot point. Now, how many rows am I offsetting? Don't forget that for the first row, I don't need to offset by anything because I wanna stay on that row. So it means I should actually be starting, you know, with zero. So I'm gonna do a sequence, right? And the number of rows I'm gonna just have here is the number of rows that I have in this range. Okay, I can select the whole range, it doesn't really matter. It's the rows I need. So this is gonna give me eight, okay? So, but the important thing is that for the start, I'm gonna start at zero. So it's gonna create, let's just watch this. Let's evaluate this portion. So it's gonna create zero, one, two, three, four, okay? So that's what it's gonna do. So for the first one, it's not gonna offset at all, offset by one. Now, I'm not offsetting by the columns, no. For the height, it's redundant, but I could say yes, because on each row, I'm dealing with each row, row by row. So for the height, I will say one. Then for the width, I just say three. I could decide to use, you know, columns function to get the number of columns, but don't worry, let's just use three. So tell it that, okay, for the first one, don't offset by anything. Then, you know, sum up, you know, three columns. For the next one, when you offset by one, you are here at this point, sum up three columns, okay? And I do three. Right. So once I have this this way, then I just wrap that in a subtotal function to say, okay, so subtotal 109, and it's going to do this row by row, okay. And we have exactly the same thing. So makes sense. So the offset simple. Just pick a pivot. You know, use the sequence so that you can move row by row and then use, you know, the width to say you want to sum three columns, okay? And that's how that works. So those are the three ways, I mean, I would solve it. I'm sure there are many other ways to doing it. So you could use, you know, beyond what I've used, the Lambda, Airmode, and Offset, there are many other ways. But lastly, I was just like, okay, fine. I mean, yes, these are all formulas, but you probably could do it quickly, you know, with Power Query, just getting everything you want at once. So I was like, let me just demonstrate that quickly. So in this case, I'm just going to select um, everything but the last column there, which I don't need. I'm going to do Alt A P T, which is like get data you know, from table range. So I do OK. Opens the Power Query editor for me, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the three of them. I'm going to add a column where I'm just going to do, you know, a sum of the three of them. So I do standard and I do add, right? So it creates for me a new column, okay? So the new column is the summation of the three. So what do I do at this point? I'm just gonna do a group, okay? So it's more like getting the unique list of items in this addition column, and it's gonna do a count. So I'm gonna do group by, so I'm just saying group by, you know, the addition column, and just do a count rows and do okay, right? And simple enough, you have that, so you have one, two, three, and you have two, four, two. So meaning that the number of rows that sum up to one is two, four, two is four, and the third one is two. And you probably can see we already had that answer here somewhere. So that's two, you know, four, and two. And this is, you know, pretty simple. I mean, I'm just going to close this, but I just wanted to show you how quickly you could have done it with our query. So I hope um, you kind of love this video. I may mean, have spent some time here, but I wanted to explain you know how to do the dynamic row by row sum because most times once we just put a sum function it gives us you know the answer all at once the entire sum but when you want to have it row by row these are some ways you can approach it so i hope you like this video 
I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. And for now, I'm out.